love strategy management. Who doesn't like strategy management? It's the most fun. But no, now I gotta play Empire of Sin. And so here we are. Just six months later, a year since an actual video has actually come through. It's great. I moved. I have a new home now, which is great. Is this better? This does not feel better. This, this feels very Star Wars esque. Through the screen. Tim! Oh no, he's choking on food. Go like this, chin up top, you know, a little. <laughs> I think we'll just push it down. What am I doing anyway? Okay, well, what are we doing? Empire of Sin is not the game it claims to be. So I got a confession to make. When I'm on Instagram, I actually really enjoy looking for the ads, like the terrible ads. I enjoy watching them, and so what I'll do is, because I want them in my algorithm, is I'll go and interact with bad ads, and it'll give me even worse ones. The video from a guy that's got 50 bucks to get his music career off the ground, or watching uh, an actor's acting tapes because they're trying to get jobs in stand-up comedy. It's pretty great. I mean, yeah, and I just get to witness it myself on my phone. So in doing that, I actually stumbled upon something really interesting and maybe it wasn't for the better. Is when I started seeing ads for this game called um, Empire of Sin and I thought it was really neat at first because it it's, was put out by Paradox Interactive which obviously has done a lot of really great stuff. Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, all these really cool strategy management games and then all of a sudden comes this really different one. It looks like it's based during the Prohibition era. You're controlling mobsters and you're running a racket and you're making moonshine and you're trying to smuggle hooch across state lines. Yeah, turn. Sorry, man. I was talking about the beer. Uh, that's no problem, buddy. All right. <laughs> And one thing you should know, and you've probably seen if you follow the stream at all, is that we don't play a whole lot of in-your-face games, other than Apex, which we're maining as Mirage forever. Never changing, don't care if he's terrible, it will always be Mirage mains. Aside from that, strategy management is something that I've really enjoyed, and one of the things that I've never been able to get over is just how great SimCity 2000 was, and so I I've kind of looked at why I can't get away from it, and I keep coming back to it, and I can't, like, break away. Anytime I think of, well, what's a good game when I play a strategy management game, my thought is always, am I having as much fun as I did when I played SimCity 2000? And chances are, I'm probably not, so I just stop playing. Three things that I've noticed about strategy management games over the years that make them really great. Purpose, elegance, and of course, management. So purpose. In SimCity 2000, you want to make the best city that you possibly can. You have a purpose. You're managing the city. You want it to do well. You don't want to go bankrupt. You don't want the whole city to burn down. You want your tax infrastructure to be up. And so you use the tools in the game to do this. But you have a purpose, which is the thing number one. Number two, elegance. To accomplish this goal, whatever the goal is of the game, so in SimCity 2000, it's to have a well-managed running city, you have tools at your disposal. Now, some games incentivize using the best tools as you go along, but others just kind of let you go, and SimCity 2000 was one that was like that. You weren't penalized for using non-late stage strategies. You could continue to do the same thing that worked for you over time, and just continue to do that until the end game, and you can still win and still have a ton of fun. It wasn't trying to put you down the path of you can only do this, and once you get down this path, you have to use this strategy. Finally, management. One thing you can see between good strategy management games and bad strategy management games is elegant solutions. Um, a lot of times you'll play a game long enough and you'll kind of see patterns, and sometimes it's because the game is broken, but other times it's because the game is actually really fun and enjoyable and allowing you to be able to take advantage of a mechanic in the game and utilize your own strategies to be able to exploit that mechanic to your own ends, and sometimes it's a ton of fun. This is why I think that SimCity was one of the best strategy management games ever, and I'm sure I've played a lot of other really great ones, but Empire of Sin lacks these qualities in such a way that makes it a terrible game. Just a little bit of background, so Empire of Sin was essentially hobbled from the beginning. Prison Architect today, that was released in 2014, has averaged 2,000 players. So a game that got released December of last year, December of 2020, 
can't even compete with a game that came out in 2014. And both are kind of have similar strategy management bents. Another thing that hobbled it right off the back is that it's $39.99. $39.99 is a lot to ask, but when you know what to expect somewhat from a game, a title, it has a brand. This is no title, no brand, right out the gate, $39, not my thing. First of all, it lacks purpose. Um, you start the game by selecting your character. You can kind of tweak them on your own and adjust some of your abilities that you're going to be using, but you really can't customize them other than what's just the fighting character, and that's really what you're banking on at the beginning of the game. It's just the turtle strategy. You're fighting everybody. You're trying to stay alive. There's no diplomacy at the beginning. There's no money making at the beginning to buy better henchmen. It's just fight, 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 fight. The only way that the game builds purpose or meaning without actually learning about it is building into this weird like story campaign which at times was fun but it was so buggy and glitchy and misplaced that there was really no point in playing it after a while. It's basically just a gigantic funnel that puts you to fight, 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 fight. Every quest just, just ends up with a boss battle so if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Um, it's unmanageable. It's second point. It lacks management for a strategy management game. That's a disappointment. I mean, combat view, a street view, a map view, a management view, and an overworld view. And by the end of the day, I was just so done with having to deal with all of these maps and windows. One of the people that I had seen on the subreddit was commenting on how the information was so redundant and then at the same time meant nothing because at the, at the end of the day, you're just looking in one column to see how much money you made because none of the other factors or things you can actually change or actively adjust. It just makes it look complicated to make you feel like you're managing this empire when in reality, you're looking, does the money that I'm making make me more money at the end of the month? Combat was interesting. It was like a turn-based RPG type of combat, which was actually really fun, except for the fact that the auto resolve is broken. As with most strategy games, it is completely a bad idea to let your guys do anything by themselves. And if you do, you die, or your henchmen, which you have a limited number of, and they're very expensive, and like there's bad blood, like they don't all get along, so you're very limited on who you can actually have in your crew. If they die, they're gone. That's it. For the rest of your game, you can't get them back which is a, kind of annoying. It's a neat mechanic if they were stronger and played better or you could hire just like had a waves of just nameless henchmen to pull from, this game doesn't allow you to do that. This game lacks a certain elegance. At the end of the day, all you're trying to do is just earn money, which to me wasn't that fun. I came into the game thinking that I was actually going to be able to build networks and that's what was really interesting to me was that the trailer kind of showed you you have this empire, but it needs to be protected, so you might need security. You may need to acquire materials in order to be able to have a better hooch that you're gonna be making. You may need to acquire vehicles, you may have to steal vehicles, and so my mind was thinking, okay, we have all of these resources that we're gonna have to pull from, you know, thievery, we're gonna have to fight for some, we're gonna have to bribe some people, and you're gonna have to really get creative and create a solution that worked for your empire, so that your empire, as criminal or as legitimate as you wanted it to be, could thrive. At the end of the day, this game just says, hey, um, you got all these enemies, they're gonna get stronger as you get stronger, so just start fighting, and you're gonna need money to buy more guys and buy better weapons, so you better start making money too while you fight them. And that's the end of the game. Like, I just told you what the game is gonna end with. Fighting every single street gang methodically one by one by one, and sometimes all at the same time, and then fighting the police, and then fighting a new gang that made peace with this other one, and so they're always attacking you, always just, oh, fight, 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 and you always fighting. I really wanted to like this game, and that's kind of the saddest part about it, is that when I pick up the game or when I see it in my library, I always think, man, what could have been? It's so aesthetically pleasing. I remember like first downloading the game and getting into it. The characters are rich, the voice acting is fun, the look and the feel, the music, it really was a neat game. But at the end of the day, it just felt like a pay-to-win mobile game, one of those clicker games where you're just like, send me on a mission, I need money, fight, 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 fight. And that was really it. Strategy and management really weren't a part of it. It was more an RPG with extra steps. I'd really like to know what you think. 
do you think that we have left the golden age of strategy management games, or are there some games that are really good that are still out there? I tend to think that there are a lot of games that are still out there, but they basically play to those strengths. Um, I think of games like RimWorld and Factorico that really just say, here's a sandbox, here's resources, you're limited, now go. A game like Stardew Valley, so simple in its approach, yet so complex in its story and the richness of its strategy that people still can't get enough of it. I can't stop playing it. It's a great game. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to watch me bumble through either Apex or Battlefield 5, you're more than welcome to join me on my Twitch. Thanks. Bye.